Ha! Jeet! Äh, hier sind wir wieder. Ich muss kurz äh, fix Handbrake rauspacken, weil ich Sachen geleakt habe aus Versehen, weil ich much brain bin, ähm, die nicht in die Öffentlichkeit gelangen sollten. Und ja, deswegen musste ich kurz die Aufnahme stoppen und jetzt muss ich die Aufnahme hier schneiden und äh, das wird meine FPS im Hintergrund killen. Hm. Und jetzt nehme ich auch auf gleichzeitig, also das ist wahrscheinlich alles nicht so schlau, was ich hier mache. Ja, irgendwie ist es ein bisschen nervig, dass viele Sachen einfach auf dem Hauptbildschirm aufploppen. Ähm, ja, das stimmt aber hier alles, ne? Fast, äh, Full HD, 30 FPS, äh, ja, wir cutten bis Minute 3, also das letzte Video, da habe ich die letzten 20 Sekunden rausgecuttet. Äh, hier geht es jetzt natürlich eigentlich weiter so mit schlechterer FPS. Also seht es einfach mal als eine Folge an. Ähm, wir sind immer noch auf Lasergurkenland 1.9.2.0.2.1.2.7.1.3.4, dem kostenlos erreichbaren Minecraft-Server ohne Regeln. Wir pumpen immer noch DEFCON 25, Jason Street, Strategies on Securing Your Banks and Enterprises. Wir sind schon 1.18 in und ähm, ja, weiter geht's. So much of what's really going after us. We're the people um, stuff yeah. defending ourselves from things that really may not actually be here. Was passiert in der Zeit? Ja, und das 20 boy is great quitted. We can do immediately and effectively right now instead of worrying about all those other threats that are coming out there. Uh, this is the perfect example because this was the Super Bowl uh, from this year. Uh, Vice President was there, 5,000 police officers, Secret Service. Uh, probably from the audience right now. Hi, guys. Uh, and uh, a lot of other kinds of... Brrrr, uh, Digga. Uh, Der Mikrofon. Tier level 1 security. Three teenagers went through a chain of friends. They found a ladder. And they were like, hey, let's just carry this ladder in and see what happens. And guess what happened? Everyone had to let them through. There's three guys carrying one ladder. RIP HEADPHONE JUSE Warte, ist es so schlimmer? Oder? BIP 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 Kann dir mal jemand sagen, dass er in sein Mikrofon schreit? Leute, Leute alles nicht zu ernst nehmen, ne? No hate an den Speaker an dieser Stelle. Uh, Creeper, das war Instant Karma hier. Ah, fuck. So, er geht Lisa einfach weg. Oh, das sind zwei. Uh. Oh mein Gott, die Ebola kam zu Amerika. Blup. Everybody flipped. This is worse than Shark Week, right? Or the summer of the shark. It's like Ebola came to America. How many people died ah. from Ebola in America? Two people. Two people died, and that's tragic. That's not funny. Two people died from Ebola. That's horrible, right? Nein. <lacht> Und was wir eigentlich vor? Die leading cause of death in perspective. 
Leading one, heart and circulatory disorders. Ah, fuck That's something Spinner. I'm worried about. Do you know how much bacon I consume every und day? Like, oh, I gotta ah. worry about that. That's a big threat for me. Ja, deswegen uh, baue ich da auch gerne einfach Dächer drauf auf diese Teile und mach das so hoch. But what do we fear them the most? What's driven our economy so much? It's like, what's empowered the TSA to be so idiotic? Terrorism. I have to grab your cot, sir, for the security of America. You know? And that leads to another problem. Because once again, we may not even know what we're supposed to be protecting ourselves from, but what we do is we put in these institutes, these policies and these things of saying, and telling the employees and not informing them properly of what they need to look at so they need pattern matching. They'll go like, well, this is the scenario and this is how I need to react. We don't give them the leeway to actually think critically. Mm. There's no critical thinking in a lot of the security postures of a lot of corporations, enterprises, and let's say governments. Because this is my actual USB drive that was confiscated by that TSA agent. Do you know why that USB drive was confiscated? Because it looked like a grenade. <laughs> That's it. It matched the pattern, exactly. The, well, no, I tell you, I pulled the top off, showed them that it was a USB drive, and then they're like, we well, can't take it, we have to take it. I'm like, no, I gotta destroy it. Because I actually had some element that would actually mess with the machines, and if they plugged it in, then it would be my fault. Then it's like, I mean, I was like, no, I gotta destroy that one because I'm not getting another rack, right? I now carry a USB drive grenade in my bag. But I take the top off and put it in another pocket, it goes fine. It's good. <laughs> I've got a machine gun and a pistol in my bag, USB drives, but I put them separately in two different pieces. It's like, they're, they're totally cool. It's like, because it doesn't match the pattern. Don't we all feel secure when we fly out of Vegas, y'all, on Monday? Yeah, right? So that's one of the problems uh, as well. And what are we actually looking at? It's like, it doesn't just go from physical, it's also from online. Everybody's worried about zero days. You know, zero days. Oh my gosh, they dropping O days in here. Oh my God, we're not here at this talk, obviously. But you know, it's like at DEF CON, they're dropping O days. Gotta worry about this, worry about that. Uh, SQL injection has surfaced the number one attack in 2015, probably 2017. SQL injection is not a security vulnerability. It's crappy coding. Stop treating it as a security vulnerability. And people say, well, Jason, still, you know, crappy coding can be a security vulnerability. SQL injection is not a security vulnerability. It is crappy coding. If, you got a, if you're getting owned by SQL injection, you need to talk to your uh, coders. Not to your security department. When you talk to your security department, you watch out for those coders because they're up to some sketchy stuff if they're still putting SQL injections in their stuff. Right? <laughs> but who's coming after you? What are your threats? Is it nation states? Are you worried about nation states? I mean, I wouldn't be worried about nation states. Well, maybe a little bit. But, um, uh, <laughs> but look at these, you know, it's like you got nation states. If, unless you're running a centrifuge in Iran, maybe or maybe you're uh, only a telecom company, maybe, or you're the Pope. Seriously, we spy on the Pope. Not that sketchy one with the red shoes, but this Pope, the current one. The guy who dresses up as a regular priest in Vatican City at night and feeds the homeless. He's like the Batman of Popes, he's awesome. <laughs> and it's like, and it's still spy on him. What's up with that? <laughs> so, uh, and also, you don't have to worry too much. This is actually in the vault. Uh, <laughs> so I this so lustig. The root password, the SSH uh, uh, um, system was 123 ABCDEF. I so feier this type of thing. The government is actually using you know, upper and lower case and numbers, I guess. Uh, so that's awesome. Are you worried about anonymous? You know, how many people in here is from anonymous? <laughs> 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 So I was like, uh, are we really worried about them? Because it's like, I mean, I like that last article where it says, could the hacker group Anonymous do any real damage to Donald Trump's campaign uh, in the, in the, as it's foretold or, or threatened? No. Sorry. It's a moment of silence for that one. Um, how about criminals? Maybe ah, criminals is still. are out to be your threat. Maybe you should worry about getting robbed. 
they, they're the ones that are actually nation states with nation state tools, uh, hacking activist groups. Yes, those are threats and potential threats for certain areas. But the majority of people, you need to worry about your stuff getting stolen. They want to rob you. It's like, you know, you, you don't want to be a target cybercrime. Could resist the problem. Sorry, that was awesome. They will, target lost over $100 million from that breach so far. So far. It still loses, like uh, the story board. Did they, their, their security controls, were they the vector of compromise? It was an HVAC system company that had a trust relationship. They uh, compromised the HVAC system with a spear phishing campaign that they like to say was a sophisticated attack. Whatever. Um, <laughs> and they, uh, they attacked the target. And that's how they got compromised, because of the trust relationship. It's like, and, and that's one of the things that we go after a little bit more as well. And to talk about spear phishing emails, you talk about zero days, this gets me every time. It's like majority of workers blindly open email attachments, attachments especially if they think this from someone they know. Because why would someone send you something, you know, that's malicious? That's just me and me, right? <laughs> so, what I usually do at this point is, We're sending out some seats. When I gave this talk in South Africa, I Google <sighs> biggest bank in South Africa. That totally didn't work as well as I thought it would. Uh, but, uh, but when I went to Paris, I Googled biggest uh, bank in France. And I randomly would pick a target from that search. So I would be, and, and every single one of those, I actually, the person who was an employee from that bank in all those different countries were in the audience. It was sort of awkward, but fun. Uh, and Fuck. it shows you that it can be that much of an impact. It can be that random and arbitrary. You're being attacked right now. But this is DEF CON. And it's like, I didn't want to just go after our biggest bank because y'all be all cheering me on and go, woohoo, and the banker person doesn't care. So it's like, they're probably not in here, right? So I decided to do a little twist because Chris, uh, you know, like invited me here. I wanted to make something special for him. So I decided to put a little bit different theme on it. And let's go to society on this one. Hey, I think I have so many seats mitgenommen. That's not echt alle in die Hühner. Awesome. So just like uh, S Society, I'm just going to go random and I'm going to try to find out. And it's based in New York. So let's go after one of those 1% or 1% of companies. The Power 100 okay, in New York. Okay, I'll do this with the video. Making all those money with the hedge funds and the uh, Ferrari. Sorry, let's pause it here. Hey, friends, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, that's it, right? Yeah, here. It's all good. <laughs> Alles gut rausgekartet hier, ne? Dann kann ich hey, Freunde, das, hier. das hier kopieren, dann das da rein. Ja. Nice. Okay, weiter geht's. Uh, Evil Core, weil Mr. Robot beste Serie an der Stelle, uh, kann ich nur empfehlen. Wer keinen Plan hat, was Evil Corp und F Society ist. Das ist ein random Name, das nicht sound like it's real. Das ist ein von diesen generischen Namen. Also, ja, let's attack them, right? So, I'm going after related companies now. So, this is my now target. So, as I'm targeting related companies, I just Google related companies. It's that easy. Uh, I know the CEO's name, I know their headquarters, I know the founder, I know when it was founded, the subsidiaries, uh, subsidiaries whatever, uh, the type of businesses, and the profiles, because they're on YouTube and Instagram, because they're hit related companies, right? Uh, so let's go look at some of their, their stuff. Uh, let's go to their uh, website. That's a pretty website. And that's how normal people see the website. When normal people go to a uh, company's website, this is what they see. Have I ever been accused of being normal? Never. So, how do I see and an attacker see this website? Well, with this wonderful thing called extensions. So now, from just going to the website, all I have is their IP addresses, their hosting information, the NS lookup numbers. Uh, I know it's sort of disappointing because they're actually really well protected and sort of irritating. 
Kann es sein, dass die Slides hart verzögert sind in dem Talk und ich das jetzt erst merke? OneWarePark.com, Related.com, then a whole bunch of dot .cnn, uh, I mean a dot .cnn, dot .cn, there we go, a lot of China domains, and, I, and I'm at society, right, so is Dark Army involved in this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little nervous now, though. I'm a little nervous about this, to see what happens. So it's like uh, I go on from there. Uh, let's look at some of your social media profiles. There's YouTube. Because who wants to do, I mean, Bloomberg seems very exciting and, and, and interesting, so yeah, they got a lot of views on that one. What was it, 36 in three months? Yes. Uh, so y'all, uh, so, sorry, I, I don't mean to disrelate you, Dr. Um, but here's our Instagram. I actually have some those nice pictures of buildings. Um, and, but they've got 1,800 followers, and they're only following 170 because they're very selective. Uh, that's nice. Let's go to their uh, LinkedIn profile. Here's, I love LinkedIn. LinkedIn's like the Facebook of corporations. It's like, I will accept, by the way, I will accept every LinkedIn invite that I've gotten. I've accepted all of them. And it's like, because that helps, you know, spread my, my connections. So if you want to send me a LinkedIn invite, feel free. Uh, I'll take it. Um, and so right here on LinkedIn, you see all the related companies, you see there's 1,600 targets, I'm sorry, employees uh, on LinkedIn uh, that I can go after, uh, which is awesome. And then you look over here, this is their Twitter profile. That's sad, it's like, because uh, everybody knows how long to tweet. They're following four people, they have 309 followers, they've got one like, and they haven't tweeted yet. What the, how do you get 309 followers without even tweeting? It's like, I don't know how that happens. But, uh, but they, they manage that. Um, Here's your social profile, Facebook, because, you know, I usually like to go after Facebook to go after employees. Uh, I have mostly every attack has, I've done uh, successfully through a company has gone through their Facebook profile or Twitter profile. But remember, I'm an society. Okay? I'm going after the man. I ain't going after the employee. Okay? So here's the attack page. This is where I usually go and pick my talk. Bitte keine Spoiler, ich bin erst zweite Staffel. Ich bin erst zweite Staffel hier. Und ich bin versucht, diese Person zu attacken. Ich bin versucht, diese Person zu attacken. Und ich komme auf diesen einen Typ, der straight out of Mr. Robot, oder? Right? Timur F. Gaiman. Und das ist nicht ein guter Name, dann ist es like, das Name ist Evo. Er hat so etwas Schäden in seinem Jeep gerade jetzt. Du kannst sehen, dass es ein sehr guter Name ist. Sorry, Timur, Timur, oder whatever it is. Uh, he's the executive vice president. He's going to be my patsy. He's the guy I'm going to act like I'm, I'm going to assume his identity. And it's like, and how do you see my identity? You've got to information about him. So here it already said right now. Uh, he's been around. He was at Goldman Sachs. So he's part of the man still, you know, probably one percent there. Uh, these are some of the things he's done, some of the places he's been. That's good information. Uh, I do a little bit more uh, Googling on him. I uh, do a little bit more information. Um, I get to his LinkedIn profile. Sad. Alias, right? That does not look like a legit profile, some kind of executive uh, person in the company. It's like, you're like, he created it, and then I stopped that way when he realized how old the LinkedIn is. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm, I'm just done. Um, but that, I didn't stop there, right? So I, I, didn't, I don't need to find that much information out about him, you know, because I'm just trying to assume his identity. It's not like I need to really find out where he lives, his home phone number, uh, his address, and where he was born, uh, but I did. Um, so, That's cool. It's like, and you know what? Maybe we want to like send them off onto the Hamptons and take over his uh, apartment. It's like, uh, and that's cool because we guys can Google map it uh, and we know where it's at and we can do something like that. So now we've got a pretty good amount of information on Mr. Timmer, right? Um, what do we need to do now? We need to find out the victim. First, we're going to attack and compromise so we can take over everything, right? Let's go back to this wonderful list here. Um, I literally was supposed to look down the list and I see that poor guy at the very bottom just like, what about me? <laughs> It's George Perez. Let's go after George Perez. He seems like real. <laughs> I don't know what movie he was in, but it was a bad one, right? <laughs> It's like, 
he was seen. That guy's got like a, a like a Persian cat somewhere in a big orange chair. And he's done he's done horrible things just like the wrong thing. Sorry. <laughs> Hier, damit ihr den Joke kurz versteht, das ist der Dude, über den er redet. No? Hier. Uh, I got this you one guys. Uh, uh, vibrant urban centers. And like this, he's really a nice guy. He helps with the art. And he's like, it's not going to stop me from attacking him, but I just want to note, he's, he seems like a really nice guy, uh, <laughs> even though he doesn't wear those shorts in public. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of information about his art, give me some more information about where he lives. All information that I can use to make the spear phishing email real. I want as much information that I can make the uh, spear phishing email real. How do I send the email though? I gotta figure out what their email addresses are, and that's hard. Um, sorry. Um, I go to email format.com. I type in the domain name, and then they give you a nice little list of first name, last name, how the, uh, their emails are sent out. And this one was actually sort of funny. Because when I did this one, it came up with another uh, it comes up with another tab. And this tab actually shows you where those email addresses have been used. And when it did, I saw that one that was highlighted right there. It was really weird. It was on a uh, Union Square uh, leasing at related.com. And it went to this website and it said guest and it had a number. And usually I don't do this, but all my hacking is usually just going on your instincts and just going, hey, what if I do this? So I went there. That doesn't look good. Does that look good? Like, I mean, I got the social engineering stuff. So we have to be technical, kind of but, you know, even from my perspective, That's that doesn't look good. So I went through that, that code a little bit. It's like, you know, I try to act like I did, you know, I see a CSI, but not typing on two keyboards. Um, <laughs> and I went to the main website and I'm thinking, yeah, that's not good for them. So they may want to fix that, FYI. Um, I don't give uh, warnings, I just let you see it and see. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll fix that eventually when they get to this or start the, uh, the streaming order. Uh, so now the next step is very important. Uh, this is the part where I do have to do an extra kidney warning, okay? Because if I send you an email about something good, something nice, like you won money, what are you going to do? What the f ever, that's fake. No one sends me anything free, ever. So that doesn't usually work. So what happens if you send them something bad? Something that's horrible has happened. After the Boston bombing, within a day or so, I got an email. It said Boston News. It literally had an IP address on it, slash Boston. That was it. Your daughter was running in the Boston Marathon that day. You had relatives that live in Boston. You didn't know what was going on, CNN was getting news about what was happening. Did you click that link? When tragedy strikes, we want to know more information. During different uh, times in this, in this talk, in different places, I've used the murder of two girls. I've used a terrorist attack in Paris. I've used uh, political unrest in South Africa to create my emails. Remember the kittens, but I'm an evil mother because I'm trying to steal from you. What part do we forget about that? Have you ever been robbed by someone going, I'm sorry about having to do this, dude. It's like, uh, I know this is a little overkill. I mean, no pun intended, but I need all your money in your wallet. Okay, I mean, I'm... <laughs> This shouldn't have to be necessary. I will, I will kill you if you don't give me your money. Okay, please, I'm sorry. You have to be but I need your money. You don't get mugged like that unless you're in Canada, right? <laughs> no, seriously. I am trying to steal from you. I broke into a building in a wheelchair before. I am a horrible person. I'm trying to rob you. So of course I'm going to use thefts of people. I'm going to use crowds to convince. You know why? It increases my odds of you clicking the link. Remember and the kids. that's what I want. So what do I need to do now? I need to Google up some tragedy. Problems in Miami, quote, related group, which is a company. So, I mean, you know how hard it is to Google freaking related anything? It's like, 
this, this was like the worst assignment I gave myself ever, okay? Usually this thing takes under an hour to get ready and done. It took me forever. I mean, like at least two hours when I was not even playing Overwatch at the time. It was like horrible. Okay, so, but I did find some dirt. This was at the beginning of July of this year. Did Miami fix the developer avoid labor taxes? The feds are investigating. Go on. All right. It's like, this is by Nicholas Nihamas. And it talks about the end of the, 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 the very bottom, the, 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 yeah, that uh, building complex. So I got it. Let's send an email. Please note, it's in red. I used a comment on a dot. Dear Feds, F you. I didn't do anything bad. This did not actually go out. This is a demo for hypothetical demo purposes. Uh, so it went to George Scott Perez to front of Timber.game, I know it's up to the CCC, BCC, because I didn't send it out. Subject line is, this is very concerning, we need a uh, response immediately. Three exclamation points. You know why? One exclamation point, I'm sort of excited. Two exclamation points, I'm, I'm shouting. Three, serious business. Okay? <laughs> that means you gotta pay attention to this one, though. Something going down, right? So, greetings, George. I've just been contacted by Nicholas Nihanas, who says he's been reporting on our issues with uh, that place. Uh, he just published a more disturbing article, which if, his, uh, if the accusations regarding you bear out, will be leaving us with some tough decisions. I've already made inquiries to some old colleagues from Goldman Sachs in Moscow to find out what they can. We need to get ahead of the situation before it sinks our whole enterprise. Take care of Tim R. F. Galen, sent from a mobile device. <laughs> Oh, they are school with them sent from a mobile device. Did I tell him to click that link? Did I tell him he really needed to click that link? Did that SOB click that link? <laughs> probably. We're going to go out of the for the demo person. I probably think you would have clicked that link because he's like, because you want to know what's going on. I'm not telling you to do something. I'm telling you about something horrible that's happening and I'm giving you a way to find out more. And that's all that's necessary. So, I also have a confession to make. And it's like, you know, just a little bit of one. Um, I lied. I'm sorry, my friends, but my confession is I couldn't trust you. So uh, there was a little bit more uh, to this than, uh, than I was letting you on to, because I'm trying to disrupt the government. I'm trying not to just take out, like, related.com. So what else did I decide to do? This wasn't random. <laughs> All my other talks were pretty random and arbitrary. But there was for a particular reason why I picked George here. Just a small one. I like that. George is bestie pals for somebody that I maybe actually do want to attack. Oh, so what do I need to do? I need to compromise George first. Yep. Now I've compromised George, and now I can send emails out as George. Who am I going to be sending out an email to? <laughs> right. But how? <laughs> you know, Big brain. It's like, uh, <laughs> right place, uh, it's like, so how do I contact them? I don't have this, you know, how do you get the president's personal information? Uh, maybe based in. Uh, please go to the feds, okay? Well, I did uh, obscure information that was necessary to obscure uh, because I heard that he pissed on, I'm pissed off um, if, I, uh, if I let this out information. Secret Service did tell me, he said, if you release that, you're in trouble. And so uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, so this is his official, there's his birthday, his social security number, uh, all of Trump's personal email addresses that he uses, uh, also all his family members' uh, personal email addresses, uh, all his Twitters, his YouTubes, all that uh, on Facebook. So, yeah, that happened. Um, but now that I've got a way to email him uh, on his personal email address, look at all those cameras coming up. Woo! <laughs> and I'm a horrible person because I should be cooking the next slide, but I'm late. <laughs> Are we good? Hold on, I got it. Alright. Have to be taking pictures of 
probably get this off the screen later, but you're one of them. Was ist denn auf der Slide? Das kann ja kein Mensch lesen, so klein ist das. Oh, es ist anstrengend zu lesen. Aber spannen Sie das nicht aus. Ist doch locker eh fake, oder? Ah, hier ist die Dings. 3 Z N C A S Ach ja, ich tippe es jetzt nicht ab. So I found this guy, uh, Wayne Barrett, who authored a book that painted Trump's financial history as at the least shady. Really? That's my shock face, by the way. Okay. Plus the pearl and everything. So, um, so now I've got everything I need to know to create an email. And yes, there is a little thing because I really didn't change the first one very much. Uh, here it is to you, Chaos to, uh, uh, our cute at Yahoo, which is this. Uh, George from George John Perez. This uh, is looks it's going to be a huge issue. No matter our differences, we need to get ahead of this. Three exclamation points. Now two things. It's like I knew it to be misspelling because that way you could understand it better. Uh, and uh, and two, Rude. they've had a falling out. It's like actually George and uh, Donald actually had a falling out, so it's like I need to make sure that I understood that because I'm actually coming in like I'm trying to be concerned. So Greetings, Donald. I've just been contacted by Wayne Barry who says he's been writing a new book about you. He just published a very disturbing excerpt from his new, for his new book, uh, which uh, the accusations regarding you per hour will be leading us with some tough decisions. I've already made inquiries to some old colleagues from Goldman Sachs in Moscow, as you probably know too, to find out what they can. We need to get ahead of the situation before it gets worse. I still consider you a friend and not want you to see you uh, being attacked this way. Uh, take care, George Perez. This is a mobile device. Ich liebe dieses mobile device thing. No way, thing. Right? Be even funnier if you did with Android phone that he's no longer using and has a stage fright that's put on there. So I think that's essentially how you would disrupt the government. You know, it's like you're taking over the control of the person who's actually supposedly leading you. So, um, as you say, I'm trying, I'm sorry not to be too political. I, I promise you, if you look at my DEF CON 18 talk, I showed you how to assassinate President Obama. So I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity attacker. So, um, so, and then also another thing is, um, I sent from a mobile device. And mm. the reason why I do that is because why? Because when you see that, you make allowances. I don't know how they say hello, greetings, salutation, what's up, dude? You know, I don't know that. I don't know how they say, take care, see you later, hasta la vista. It's like, I don't know. But when you see something from a mobile device, the person goes, okay, well, they were just in a hurry, they're just typing it out. And so that's the reason why all my emails, no matter what I'm using, I'm using always say from a mobile device, because I don't care about spelling. So I think we can all agree, job done, right? All right, now guess what? This is my dessert and vegetable talk. Because I just gave you dessert, hope you all had a good laugh. We all realize, more importantly, how simple and easy it is to craft an attack. How an attacker will look at your system and use your social media, use the information that you're willing to give out against you, right? Can we all agree that that was a good way to explain that? We're showing an example. So let's actually see what we can do now. Aber ich werde hier irgendwie immer falsch an runtergehen bringen, wenn ich da runtergehe, oder? Maybe. How many people think to a talk here, where someone has gone and said, I knew I broke this, and I broke the old day, and it broke it, and I just trashed it, the whole GUI needs to be written, the company didn't know what to do, they're not responding properly, it's horribly trashed. Okay, I'm done. See you later. They're like, how do you fix that? Well, I don't know. I just showed you how to break it. Those suck. If you're going to show me how Rude. something is broken, you better have some ways to show me how I can fix it or you're wasting my time. Period. So that's the way I look at this situation. So let's start doing some defensive stuff now. Because this is what the whole thing is all about. This next thing. This is Brain a defensive dead. talk. Surprise. 
One of the things you can do for your company, if you don't know how to do OSINT, if your employees don't know how to do OSINT, there are assets and ways for them to learn and to get resources for that that you don't have to work on. OSINTframework.com will be one of those resources. It's a drop down list for your employees to go through to start looking at your site, your company, as an attacker would. Because you have to look at your company like an attacker would, because attackers are looking at your company. There's another thing. I like to thank April for pointing this one out to me. Mike Basil actually has a distro that you can boot up on for nothing but OSINT and social engineering purposes. It's like the Cali Linux for OSINT. It's like, uh, which is like the Cali Linux like the Uber for hacking. But still, the, uh, that's a great resource right there to give you all the tools pre-configured, pre-scripted out to help you do OSINT. To start looking at your employee profiles that may be damaging to your company, that may be used against you. Also, we've learned how awesome taste in is, right? We already know that. Do searches on PasteIn. PasteIn has an alert feature. Your company is named Hacker, Hacksaw, Carded, VIN number. It has the way to send you an alert when you put in the keywords to let you know, hey, you just showed up on PasteIn. And, and, and I'll just heads up. There's hardly ever any reason you show up on PasteIn that's good, okay? I, I, I have never heard of one. Yet, okay. I'm like, oh look, I'm not. Oh, basement. Yeah, awesome. Another thing that you can do is see what your com your devices are doing out on the internet. That's showdown. And look at all. The, look at this. Just like in the zombie movie, that many red dots is not going to end well for you, right? That's never a good thing. It's like all those are exposed and possibly compromisable machines and servers. Oh, warte, mir fällt gerade auf, als know, wenn ich hier wieder reinspringe. Uh, they're going to be more limited after this is over. Uh, there's the ports, there's, they got open SSH running, that's nice. Um, and look at the versions. That's what I like looking at, the versions of all these different servers. It's makingmoneycoach.com is their post-fix SMTPD server. Awesome. Uh, they won't be making much money after this, right? Um, not my fault, it's already out there. Um, I go a little bit further, I see the Apache. They're running an Apache server 2.4.25. Yeah, that's the story, but we'll get to that a little bit later. What's on that Apache server? Oh, that is. Who wants to guess the user ID and password is admin admin? I would not know. I'm not a bad person. I didn't actually check. I'm just saying, it probably is. Okay? But I was more concerned about the version. Because you can just Google the Apache 2.4.25 and see vulnerabilities and see what comes up and stuff like this comes up. They may be having some issues. If not now, in the near future, like by Monday. Um, and you have to ask yourself, okay, well, Jason, who's really going through Shodan and trying to find vulnerabilities on servers and coming? Why would someone do that? That's just me. This mother does it every day. Right? I mean, he's doing this just lie, you know, because he can. Look at the things that he found. It's like, and before WannaCry came out, before WannaCry hit, 1.17 million hosts scanned. 33,468 uh, 33, uh, found infected. Yeah, but. I mean, that's what he wants to do on a Friday night. I'm not going to judge, you know, it's like, cool. You know, it's all, we all have hobbies. So it's like, that's already out there. People are attacking when you're physically at your house. You need a, you forgot to go to the store real quick and pick something up. You feel safe. Let me leave the door open, you know, or let, unlock, and just run out there, my neighbors will watch you. When you connect a computer onto the internet, your neighbors are now 
China, Russia, Paraguay, Texas, you know, New York. It's like, it's everywhere. Especially Paraguay, you watch out for the Paraguayans. Any Paraguayans in here? Okay, I just like to say Paraguayans. Okay, so you gotta watch out for that because those are your neighbors and they are constantly scanning. They are looking not for you. They're not looking for you. They're looking for an IP address that shows Fuck. vulnerable. Huh? That I shows that they're going to be attacked. That's all they care about. Not nationality, not political correctness, just you're vulnerable, I attack you. Uh, if your teams are small and limited, start using blue teams and boxes. You got Cinnable, you got Rapid7 does good stuff, Pony Express does some good stuff. Team Threat is really cool because it actually does virtual threat, uh, uh, intel for your corporation's internal network. Actually shows you what an exfiltration attack looks like. Uh, so I'm not here to hide products, I'm just here to tell you those are some cool things that you can do. But literally, the biggest tool in my toolbox that I use more than any other tool ever is this. Spirit, or Bing if you want to get adventurous, you know, it's like I mean, like I said, I attack everybody equally. So, yeah, you know, Google what there, else can we do? What are some of the key yeah, things that we can here do? Well, here's some things that I learned from you that I want to share. This is one of my favorites. WPAD. WPAD, if you've got WPAD on your network, you're going to have a bad day. Uh, Microsoft. Kann es sein, dass die Spinnen jetzt schon nicht mehr drum rumkommen? Das wäre ja krass. So, what did they do? They made it where, if there was a host name on the internal network, the corporate network, and the host name was WPAD, well, that means all of your workstation traffic should go through it. Guess what every attacker in the world's computer name is? Yes. W, well, after they change it from Kali Linux, it's, they change it to, you know, WPAD, right? It's like, and that's what we do. So here's what you need to do. Make a null route to 127.0.0.1 and the DNS is through for WPAD. So that way just null route. It doesn't go anywhere. Keep WPAD from communicating. And if you possibly can, just disable that BIOS. I mean, unless you're running Windows XP, the way you're running Windows, don't even raise your hand to make you stab and cry, okay? <laughs> Like the bad, you should feel that. Okay, so you probably don't want to those XP, so maybe not so much with that. Another thing to use, and I love this one. This is the most. I love this one the most. But please understand, my qualifier. If you don't do step four, you're screwed. Not my fault. Step one: create a user called domain admin underscore temp. I'm literally create that in your domain. Um, um, uh, your main domain controller. Put a password in the description. Say, password is, let me think, uh, I want to be secure, password two. Okay, delete account by July 2016. Make it realistic, right? And then you add it to the domain admins group. You literally make it a domain admin account. And you're saying, Jason, that's insane. Yes, but that's not the point, okay? Step four. Under the login hours, you set to zero. What that means is they can never log in. The password is correct. It doesn't send an error that the password's wrong. It just doesn't log in. So you set up an email alert to the SIM and the VIP viewer that someone used that account. You now have a zero false positive that someone is attacking your network and is a compromised your domain controller. Zero false positives, zero dollars, very little evidence, you detected a breach. No blinky box is required. That's something you should be using on Monday. So, what else do we do? Uh, credit where credit is due, that's all Rob uh, Ford. Uh, Twitter is Mubit, uh, cool guy. Another thing that I see way too often that really makes me sad, and I'm gonna wait because everybody's taking pictures of Mubit's uh, info. Okay, there you go. There you go. Um, unsegmented networks. What's up with that? Why are we keeping our networks all nice and open on the inside? I literally had to stop the engagement on the first day, tell the uh, client that I was not charging them, that they had to use the money to actually put someone in how to create a network. 
It was a flat network. And bro, I say flat, I mean the web servers were on the same kid.xxx network as the accountants, HR, web developers, CEOs. Email server on the same network. Kicker. The guest wireless access point that was unencrypted had the name of the company's name and guest. Where was it? On the same thing uh, as network. I literally was like, how can you try to pay me to pick test the network when you're just, it's open? <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're asking me to break into a house and you forgot to put walls up. It's like, I just, I don't know how to do this. I, I, you, you, you win. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I literally have no idea. If you're trying to confuse the attacker, you win. It's like, Segment your network. Is there any reason why HR needs to talk over the network to the web developers? No. Is there any reason why the accountants need to talk over the network to the web developers? No. Is there any reason why the CEOs need to talk over the network to the web Does anybody need to talk to the web developers is what I'm trying to say? Uh, uh, it's like, no. It's like segment those networks. Make it like a submarine. It's like if one part goes down, it's like if a submarine gets hit and it doesn't destroy it, what happens? One part is breached, but the rest is safe. You know, that's such a bob in engineering, but still, the rest of the stuff is okay. So you want to do that. You want to segment. Now, here's a, a list of uh, system tricks that I want you to start using. The very first one is patch. How many times are we tired of hearing that? You know what's even more tiring? How many to keep saying it? That's pretty tiring. Remember, WannaCry happened two months after the patch came out. And you're thinking, well, that's horrible. They should have known better. Oh, listen here. DEF CON 2002. The vulnerability for SQL Slammer came out. September of 2002, Microsoft came with the patch. February 2003, SQL Slammer hit. That's not the sad part, by the way, I'm getting to it. Check your firewall logs when you get back. Guess what you're going to see? Traffic for SQL Slammer. I don't want to go through the line, but you understand that's an unpatched system that's running SQL. It's unpatched on the internet. That's in fact, it's still going on. That doesn't make you want to drink. No, I don't have one one I don't drink. Okay? And so it's things like this that make an impact. But it's also a false impact. Because when something like this hits, people take notice. When it gets this bad, like on the second day, they really take notice. So there are probably more people patched for MSO 1117 than MSO 867. Because MSO 867, if you do pen testing, is the gold ticket, right? And everybody thought MSO 1711 was going to be, yay, it's the new one. But now, because of water cry, but it's like, no, they're all patched for that. You're like, oh no, we gotta get that patch. But what about those ones from 2008? Oh no, we can those. It's like, who uses that, right? It's like, let's make sure we got that one patch on. It's like, that's how they think. You have to make sure your policies dictate patching every month. And not just the OS, but all the applications that are out there. Make sure you're patching your Adobe and your uh, Java and your Adobe Java, and the Java and the Adobe. Uh, like, every week I'll make on those. But still, make sure you have a patching policy for it. Another thing to do is a one-by-one one pixel GIF, and I literally Googled, trust me, you can see that I Googled 1.1 one one pixel GIF, and there's actually one there. Um, put it on your website. Oh, fuck it, I've just like a shot. Put it to, to a page that does nothing but record the IP address, the operating system and the user agent stream of whoever clicked it. Because how many people are, are, do you know that are on a website going, I want to see the secret pixel, I want to see the secret pixel, I want to see the secret pixel. Okay, I did that once, but I was bored in like three in the morning, okay? Don't judge me. Okay? <laughs> Fuck, it's not so really high. Yeah, I make this all to hear. Bot, phishing people scraping the whole website for a phishing attack, big toe, open bath, and trust me, there is no, if you run a bank site and do this or using your website, they're not looking for their mortgage loan. Okay? 
Midfield's never there to check to see if they're if they qualify. It's just not going to happen. Fuck. So make sure you're alerting for those. And better yet, just not alerting to the fact that those user agents are going on to, onto your website and people are scanning it, but then start blocking them. Your user agent streams, you have a list of bad user agent streams that you can tell your web server to refuse. It's like, you know, no, Nick Tuck. No open that. No Internet Explorer. It's like, no, I'm sorry, 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 sorry the last one. That was my web server, sorry. It's like, uh, <laughs> you get to say no to these user agent streams. And shut them down. They don't eliminate your risk, but it helps to narrow it. I'm not trying to tell you how to solve everything. I'm trying to help you be a little bit better secure. Another thing is, start blocking countries. Anybody here doing business in Paraguay? You're shady. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it's like, uh, but if you don't do business in Paraguay, why is Paraguay allowed to see you on the internet? If you don't do business in Canada, because, you know, Canadians, it's like, you should be blocking Canada from seeing your website. Hmm. Your whole entire network should be blocked with a firewall. The ASN number should be blocked. If you don't do business in those countries. It's like yeah, the attack vector. Ja, wenn Leute im Urlaub von deinem Service hören und äh, ich, äh, ich, nee. Hä, ich, das ist doch keine Lösung. Oh, das ist eine gute Idee, aber es ist halt teuer, oder? And the reason why it was so sad is, as you can tell, PearsonFoundation.org and PearsonEd.com, uh, one with the zero and the other one with the one, were available. Seriously. Uh, they're not available anymore. That was a popular thought. If I don't know who owns it, hopefully Pearson does by a dollar. So they were available at the time that I gave the talk. Um, that's sad. You should own the variations of your uh, website. Uh, it's not going to solve your phishing problems, but once again, it helps lower the risk, it helps to mitigate it. Another thing is, savagery, sometimes your employees need to click on a link. They need to click and download an attachment. First of all, you teach them how to be suspicious of those and someone's sending them that you weren't expecting it. So the next thing you can do is tell them to go to a place like buyersolar.com. Tell them to upload the URL or the package. But the attachment only has non private, non secret, you know, confidential information covering the upload the attachment. I mean, let's face it, it's like the last thing they probably already have it, right? So it's like, well, you're like the bulging secrets is something they already got. So uh, tell them to do that, scan it to see if it's actually a virus, to see if there's actually something there. Um, yeah, sort of funny, but maybe more. Um, so now, The, one of the next ones is web developers should be building good code, which makes it more secure. SQL injection is not a security vulnerability, it's crappy coding. So, last but not least, the last but not least part, be cool. It's like, uh, create teachable moments for your employees. Your employees don't always, I mean, this is going to be a shock to you, but maybe, just maybe, your employees don't learn the best lessons by taking that, you know, 20 question quiz, multiple choice, that they can go back and change the answer if they got it wrong. <laughs> Classic, man can't. Every quarter or year, right? <laughs> Maybe not. So create teachable moments for them. Uh, go and have your security go around every uh, building, every uh, site that you own, and look at the keyboards for passwords. Sad part is they'll probably find some. But more importantly, the employees will know that you're looking for those things. That you have a security team that actually exists and actually in the real world that could do something like that. It's like that creates a teachable moment. I gave a talk a couple of years ago where I went to all these different security conferences and these were all results from those conferences. Uh, why my pineapples showing people, oh, look, y'all connected on those. That's sad. Um, it was very sad. Well, it was even sadder. I went to RSA. They wanted to speak. Uh, never since. Um, but uh, within seven minutes, 42 people connected to my Wi Fi pineapple. RSA, a security event for security people. I heard a lot of the go there. It's like 
seven minutes forty two. I mean I could have gotten more, but come on. The lucky number seven and the answer to the life universe and everything. I had to stop there. Um, but you're thinking, Jason, that's an old example. What's the teachable moment for us now? How many people have gone to this website? Raise your hand. That's an upset. The answer is none. None of you gone, have gone to this website. All you guys went to this website. See, you thought you were going here, you went there. Uh, Jetzt zeigt gerade zwei ähnliche Webseiten, so ne? Fishing, ihr wisst Bescheid. I own cgi-bin.email, so that means I can make everything my subdomain. Humans, when they're looking at the web, even if it's Eastern culture or Western culture, no matter which way they, they write, on a website, they read left to right. Computers always read right to left on a web address block, so they don't care what my subdomains are. But humans look at the email, they look at the URL, they go, social-engineering.org, that seems legit. I've seen CGI-Bin before, email this is the hmm. email that they sent me. I'm getting a confirmation, yeah, I should click on this. Oops. So, there you go. Now, I want to leave it with one last important thing, okay? There are good employees. This is an example of an actually pretty good response from Mandalay Bay for Black Cat coming in uh, the uh, first part of the week. They use that conference as a teachable moment for their employees. Not by going and saying, oh, close down, we don't accept the uh, USB drives now because only email attachments because we're going to get home because the hackers in town. UPS. But no, they didn't do that. Oh, fuck. Okay. What they did was say, hey, this is a good time to be security week. Learn here's a good security tip on email phishing. It actually tried to teach them a lesson using this as a way for a teachable moment by having a conference there. That's a proper way to do it. And once again, that's a positive thing to do. Are you doing positive messages to your company, to your executives, when they do something right? When they actually get security right? Do you create a, pos a positive teachable moment? Or is it always negative, something that someone said about? Results may vary. So I'm gonna leave it there. But I got 14 seconds, so screw the questions. Sorry, I'm just going to go with several minutes of uncomfortable silence. I'm going to drink here. No, I'm serious. It's done. Thank you. Okay. Ja, also das war's dann an der Stelle auch äh, von meiner Seite. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge. Das war hier der Talk von. Jason, Street Strategies on Securing Your Banks and Enterprises. Jo, haut's rein. <lacht>